welcome this version of the Real Recovery Film Festival, the San Francisco Bay Area version. On behalf of Alcohol Justice and Writers in Treatment, our producing partners, we want to thank you for being here tonight in this really gorgeous theater. Six years ago in Los Angeles, we had our first Real Recovery Film Festival uh, using mostly films that were classic films. This is a great opportunity to bring 33 movies about treatment, recovery, addiction, showing hope, uh, promoting advocacy, getting people out and talking about uh, the disease of alcoholism, talking about addiction and, and really sharing their experiences, but also seeing what it looks like on film and, and uh, building community around it. Everybody falls in love somehow. There's something in your kiss just for me. My sometime is now. Well, as an organization involved in the recovery industry for 47 years, we're really glad that we're getting some visibility for the industry. Uh, it's important that people understand the magnitude of the problem that is out there today and the need for treatment. And uh, Duffy's is committed, has been committed long term to helping people in need of, of treatment. And so we saw this as a great opportunity to invest a little back into the industry in order to maybe bring some people into a point of awareness that would help them to get into treatment. Um, but I think what might be relevant here that as sheriff of the city and county of San Francisco, um, I want to do everything that I possibly can uh, to spotlight the issues of addiction and recovery. Every one of us who has a, a struggle in life, no matter what that struggle might be, no matter what the addiction, no matter what the uh, situation, the life situation is, it's important to find your way back home to the true self that you have inside you. And that was my journey and it helped me many, many years now uh, to come back and be able to work with kids and, and help make them whole. And so what we have to do is find ways to live with it. And not only live, but create with it. So that's why I'm gonna bring up an amazing panel. I believe movies can really tell us a lot about alcoholism, drug abuse, to show it to us. It could break our hearts in a million ways. It is very hard to be a sober artist of any kind, whether you're a musician, whether you're a writer. Uh, people like F. Scott Fitzgerald couldn't write unless they were drunk. People felt like they couldn't, you know, Jim Morrison felt he couldn't play unless he was loaded. I think like a lot of, like a lot of people, I, I thought that I could only perform if I was drinking and drinking. But you know, that's uh, more circumstantial because I was, since I was always loaded when I, when I played, I thought that I had to be. Um, when I was in technical rehearsals, I used to have to drink because when you're in a technical rehearsal, you have to let the stage manager, you have to let other people, it's like out of your hands. And the only way that I could actually relax, <laughs> the only way I could actually relax to get through those kind of rehearsals, those days when I didn't have like tight control. But you know what they say about theater, it's all about um, booze, pills, and heavy meals late at night. <laughs> and actually learning how to come down after a show has been, you know, That's really, really challenging. And, um, but for me, you know, I started playing guitar when I was a young kid, and I used to smoke pot, and that gave me the focus as a kid to just, you know, do it. But later on, it really, drugs and alcohol, uh, I could not perform anymore. It got so bad for me. So the gift for me was I felt a sense of loss. This this dream that I had as a little kid to play and perform music and do, do this, I couldn't do it anymore. So. You know, I had the, the nice trophy house and a great family and everything else, and three years later, I'm a felon. I, I have nearly dragged myself to death twice, nearly died from the withdrawal once. So all these little pieces would have, if I would have just accepted, if, if I would have just accepted. So then now as I, as I look at 2014, accepting every day when I wake up that the first one drop passed my lips and this is over. So... I'm loving life the way it is right now. It's too important to mess up. Right.
first heard her heartbeat while I was in prison when I went to the doctor. I mean, I had my mind up to come to rehab, but right then and there, my mind was really totally set. I needed to get my life together. I needed to become a mommy. I thought I had good parenting skills. I love my babies a lot. I was close to getting them taken away from me. I was very close. Yeah, it scares me. And uh, what happened was I went to the program, I met with the moms uh, without a camera, and uh, we sat in a circle, we sh shared our stories, and then I went a second time and showed them Unlocking the Heart of Adoption and passed around a paper and asked for volunteers, and that's how I got the women in the film. And I really congratulate them for uh, being so courageous to share their stories on camera. It's not an easy thing to do, and they probably weren't thinking totally that they were going to see themselves up on the big screen. <laughs> just, just keep the support going and um, stay and, and get really active. And I, I think giving back, too, is a huge part of um, recovery, and I've been doing that as well. We've done a lot of work in the past several decades. We still have more work to do. The, the passage of the Affordable Care Act certainly helps us move into the public health arena. And the um, Mental Health and Substance Abuse Parity Act certainly ensures that, that substance abuse and mental health treatment will be treated on a parity level by insurance companies the same way physical illness is. It doesn't mean that we have wiped out stigma and that our work is completed, but at least we are on the right path. As they said in the film, I'm actually from the state of Nebraska. My parents were born and raised in South Dakota. My father's buried there. Um, and I was the prosecutor for the Oklahoma Liquor Control Commission for five years. And in doing so, I had the opportunity to see a lot of the bad sides of alcohol. And so um, I was talking to someone in Nebraska, and they said, have you heard about white clay? And uh, I said, I, you know, just vaguely, but not a lot. And they said, well, you need to get online. And so I Googled white clay Nebraska, which everyone you know, should do. And, and uh, there was a, there was a uh, headline that read, uh, Pine Ridge is drowning in beer. And they went on to tell about a lot of the, the, st the statistics that are uh, so um, completely unacceptable in, in this day and age. But one had to do with fetal alcohol syndrome and the fact that one out of every four children born on the reservation are born with fetal alcohol syndrome. And it really hit me. So This work continues and alcohol has been a problem and it's something that we have to uh, protect our children by educating them about about it uh, it's hard to tell somebody to put down a cold one because somebody might want a cold one or two you know but uh, it's very cautiously in how you how you practice that all together and, uh, and quite frankly if you could even hear what I was saying I wasn't even confronting him really mm -hmm. I went in there just to buy a beer and I, I was kidding with Frank, but, but it just hit me last night, and I mentioned it to Frank. I said, you know what? In the history of white clay, I may be the only person who they didn't sell a beer to. <laughs> Think about it. I mean, they have sold hundreds of thousands, millions of, four, oh, around four million cans of beer a year, yeah. and I, was the, I, I may be the only person they, they haven't sold to. And so I think there is a real contradiction. I think that, that was very symbolic. I want to say pinomaye uh, pinagi to John Maish for putting this uh, effort together. Very uh, honored to be a small part of it. God. Grant me the serenity.
to accept the things I cannot change. Courage. To change the things I can. And the wisdom. The wisdom to know the difference. Living one day at a time. Enjoying one moment at a time. Accepting hardships as the pathway to peace. that I may be reasonably happy in this life. And supremely happy forever in the next. Amen.